These are some of the most popular questions that are tested on the SAT and they are solved the exact same way. But the problem is students are either getting them wrong or spending way too much time getting to the answer and still getting it wrong. So today I'm going to share with you guys this one secret rule that I've been using with my students and it will allow you to easily get the answer quickly, get more questions correct, and most importantly, get a higher score on your next SAT. So if it's your first time here, my name is John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 11 years. And my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, 600 range to 700 plus by their next SAT. And everything we're going to talk about in this video is going to be nicely organized into this PDF right here, which I'm going to link in the comments down below. And on top of it, there's going to be additional practice questions inside. That way you can learn the concept with this video and practice it with yourself using the extra practice question and get yourself prepared for your next SAT. So I highly recommend you guys to print it out and try with me by using the link in the comments. So let's rock and roll. These types of questions are known as single equation solutions questions. And on the easy side, it looks something like this. You probably have seen something similar to this on the SAT. And on the medium hard difficulty side, it's going to look something like this. And even though this kind of looks complicated, I can assure you that they are solved the exact same way and you can get the answer very quickly. So let's go over the concept and the rule behind it. So whenever you're working with a single equation and the highest exponent is going to be one, like single equation and the highest exponent is going to be one, then the number of solutions, right? The number of X values that makes the equation true is going to be determined by the matching of X and the number. We call this the matching rule and we learned the matching rule in the systems of equations video. I'm gonna link it here or in the comment section as well. And if the question you're working with has a system like this, then you're gonna use the matching rule. But if it's going to be a single equation like this, then you're gonna use the variation of it by using just the X and the number portion. And some of you guys might be wondering, John, what the heck are you talking about? Give me a second. Let me give you a quick example as it's going to make more sense. So let me ask you this. If you were given an equation, X plus one is equal to X plus one. How many solutions are there? Like how many X values are there that would make this equation true? Well, according to the matching rule, you're going to have infinitely many solutions because your X's are matching and your numbers are also matching. But why is that? Well, let's say we plug in one for X, right? Then on the left side, we're going to get one plus one, which is two. And then right side, same thing, one plus one, two, right? So our equation is true, which means one is going to be a solution. But what if we plug in two, right? Then we're going to get three on the left side and then three on the right side. Again, equation is true, which means two is also a solution. And by now you probably have caught on that no matter what we plug in for X, our equation is always going to be true because we're doing the same thing on the left side and on the right side. So when both X and the numbers are matching, you're going to be doing the same thing, which means no matter what you plug in for X, your equation is going to be true. So how many X values that would make it true? There are infinitely many X values, therefore infinitely many solutions. Does that make sense? Well, let's do a little variation. What if your X's are matching, but your numbers are different? So for example, X plus one is equal to X plus two. And if we plug in X as one, we're gonna get two equals to three, which is not true. Our equation is not true, which means one is not a solution. What about two? Then we're gonna get three is equal to four, which is again, not true. So no matter what you plug in for X, this equation is never going to be true because you're adding a different number to it on each side. So how many X values would make this equation true? How many solutions are there? There will be zero solution. So our answer is going to be zero. Does that make sense? But what if both X and the numbers are different, right? So for example, if we have something like X plus one is equal to two X plus three right? Well, if they are both different, then you can actually solve for the X value. Because if you subtract X, you're going to get X is equal to minus two, which means when X is minus two, your equation is going to be true. And for this one, minus two is the only value of X that will make the equation true, which means it's the only possible solution. So how many solutions are there? Just one solution. Make sense? And lastly, what if X's are different, but numbers are matching? So what if it's X plus one is equal to two X plus one? Well, if that's the case, again, we can solve for X. We're going to get X is equal to zero, which means that's the only possible solution. One solution. Make sense? 
So that's the logic behind this version of the matching rule, but you're not gonna need it unless you're solving like a difficulty five, like the hardest questions on the SAT. But when it comes to easy, medium, medium hard version of this question, table alone is not only enough, but it's going to be faster than doing the math behind it. So let's go over how the rule plays out on the actual digital SAT question. So the question says, in the given equation, K is a constant. For what value of K does the equation have no solution? And according to matching rule, it has no solution or zero solution when X's are the same, but numbers are different. So we want our X's to be the same, but our numbers to be different. And we already know our numbers are going to be different. So now our goal is to make the X's match up. And for what value of K would make them the same? Well, let's find out. 4X needs to equal KX. What's the value of K? Divide by X on both sides. We're gonna get K needs to equal to four. When K is equal to four, your X's will match up and your numbers will be different, which means you're gonna have zero solution. So our answer is going to be choice C. So does that make sense? Now we're gonna make the questions progressively harder and work our way up. And the last one is going to be kind of wonky, but let's take it step by step and work our way up. So the next question is going to look something like this. Highly recommend you to just pause the video, try it out yourself, and then see if our works match up. So are you ready? Let's go number two. In the equation above, B is a constant. If the equation has infinitely many solutions, what is the value of B, right? So in order for us to have infinitely many solutions, we need our X's to match and numbers to match. So let's find out what B needs to be. So first I'm gonna expand everything out and combine as much as possible. So I'm gonna get BX minus 12 minus 8X is equal to negative 12, which is gonna be BX minus 8X minus 12 is equal to negative 12. Okay, so it looks like our number portions are going to be matching up, so that's gonna be good. But when it comes to the X's, well, we have X on the left side, but we got nothing on the right side, right? So what are we supposed to do? Well, having no X on the other side is like having plus zero X. Does that make sense? And because we need our X's to match up, I'm gonna figure out what B needs to be in order for them to be the same. So if I pull these out and make an equation, it's gonna be BX minus 8X is equal to zero X, which is the same thing as just zero. And to find the value of B, I'm just gonna isolate it. And I'm gonna realize that my B value needs to equal to eight. When B is equal to eight, our X's match up, numbers match up, which means we have infinitely many solutions. So our answer is going to be eight. Does that make sense? And now let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Some of you guys might be thinking, John, can't we just pop this into decimals and use the slider function and find the value of B? Well, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's not gonna work. So if we pop it in, we're gonna get BX minus four. And if we put B as a slider, let's see, then no matter what you plug in for B, like this doesn't move. And you're gonna get zero, zero, or zero, whatever Y is, and that's not really gonna get us anywhere. So Desmos is a no-go for these types, simply use the matching rule instead. Make sense? Now, let's go to the next type. The question says, which of the following equation has exactly one solution? So we know it has one solution when both are different or only the numbers are matching. So if you had the rules memorized, here's what it would actually look like real time. So when it comes to X and numbers, we have X is matching and numbers are different, which means it's going to be zero solution. X's are matching, numbers are the same, which means it's going to be infinitely many solution. X's are the same, Y's are the same, which means again, infinitely many solution. X's are different and numbers are also different, which means that's gonna be just one solution. So as long as you know the matching rule inside out, these questions can be solved in seconds. Does that make sense? Cool, let's keep going. Last question. So this is where it gets a little wonky. Desmos is not gonna get you anywhere. Doing a whole bunch of math is also just gonna waste your time, but the matching rule will save your day. So the question says, in the equation above, A and B are constants where A is less than zero and B is greater than zero. So A is negative, B is positive. For what value of A does the equation above have infinitely many solutions? So we have infinitely many solutions when X and the numbers are all matching. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify everything out and find out what the X's are and what the numbers are on each side. So first off, we're gonna simply divide each number by nine. We're gonna get two X plus three minus A over 12 is equal to BX plus 27B. 
So the X portions are right here and the number portions are right there. So now let's match up the X values. So we're gonna get 2X needs to be same thing as BX, which means our B value needs to be just two. So B is gonna be two right there and B is also going to be two right there. And now let's talk about the number portion. We have three minus A over 12 is equal to 27 times two, which is going to be 54. So if we do the math, we're gonna get A over 12 is equal to 51, which means A is equal to 51 times negative 12. So 51 times negative 12 is going to be 612. So A needs to be negative 612, which means our answer is going to be negative 612. So no matter how intimidating or complicated the question looks, as long as you can recognize the pattern that if I'm working with one equation and my highest exponent is going to be one, then I can simply use the matching rule to get to the answer. So what you need to do for these types is one, memorize the table, two, understand the logic behind it, and three, try out the additional practice questions on the next page. If you can get those, you are gonna be set. You will never miss any of these types of questions on your next SAT. So if you guys found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments or any other future video requests that you want me to talk about, leave them in the comment section down below. So that's gonna be it. I'll see you guys on the next video.